One of the first methods that we talked about with regard to binary search trees was how can we report all of the values within the tree. This was our in order walk. We're going to examine a slightly different problem now. This problem being how do we report all of the values within a certain range in the tree. So here our range of values we wish to report is 8 to 26. So we want to find every single value within the tree in that range. So how can we do that? Well, we are like always going to start at the root. So first we're going to identify that 25 is in the range of values. And then because 25 is still within this range, I'm going to have to search both to the left and to the right. So I'm going to search to the right. And then I find 40, which is not in the range. So I'm gonna to have to search to the left. 36 is not in the range. And notice nothing to the right of 36 could be in the range either. So I'll keep going left. And then I'll find node 26. And to notice it's actually possible that more copies of 26 would lie down here. In this tree, there are no duplicates, so that's not the case, but our algorithm cannot know that. So our algorithm will keep searching. 31's not in the range, so it'll search to the left of that, and then it will get down to 29, and then it will eventually arrive at nil, and then it will know there are no more values. Similarly, it's also going to be searching to the left. It's going to search to the left, and it's going to find eight, which is within our range. And notice it does not know whether or not any values on the left are less are within the range because they could be less than or equal to eight over there. So it will still have to search to the left and then to the right and then to the right and then finally verify that there is nothing down there. When I'm searching to the right of eight, intuitively we know every value in here is between eight and 25, but the algorithm does not and it doesn't know which values those are. So it's going to search down here and find nine is then going to search down here, find 19, it's going to search down here and find 22, and search down here, find 13, search down here and find 15. And now it has found and presumably reported all those values. Let's see how this looks in the code, which is right down here. This code looks exactly like what I just described. If the value we're looking at is bigger than the minimum. For example, 25 was bigger than the minimum. We're going to have to search to the left. 19 was bigger than the minimum. We're going to have to search to the left. 40 was bigger than the minimum. I have to search to the left. If the value we're looking at is between the two values, we're going to have to print it out. And if the value we're looking at is smaller than the max, we're gonna to have to search to the right. So eight was smaller than 26, smaller than 26, smaller than 26, smaller than 26, we have to keep searching to the right. So this code doesn't look too bad. The question is going to be the runtime of this. And actually we're gonna have two different ways to express the runtime here. So first thing is we're going to need to know how many nodes were reported. Number of nodes in the range. Because for sure, no matter what I do, that will be important in my runtime. And also, we may need to know the height of the tree, which is h. With these in our head, let's see if we can understand what's happening. So looking at this code here, no matter what, I'm going to at least take theta of i. How does that appear in the code, though? No matter what, I'm going to need to print out all of those values. So that print statement will get called exactly i times, one for each value within the range. And notice that we're always going to need to search down to the height of the tree, no matter what we do. We need to find out that there was nothing within the range. So we always reach these nil pointers. So we're also going to run h times and that is for each of these recursive calls that we are making. So our runtime here is theta of i plus h. So depending on exact specifics, you may be closer to that i range or you may be closer to that h range. For example, if you have an empty set of values that you're trying to report, in our tree, for example, maybe we're trying to report values between 32 and 33. If we did that, values between 32 and 33, I'd need to go to the right, left, left, right, and then there's nothing in between these two values, so I can't go anywhere else. So if you're trying to report an empty range, you're gonna look more like theta of i, and if you're trying to report a bunch of values like we did in our example, you're gonna be closer to theta of i.
the next method we are going to discuss is how do we find the minimum value that is still greater than a particular given value. So what do I mean? Let's say we want to find the min that is greater than or equal to 14. Like always, we're going to start at the root. And if I start at the root for this problem, the minimum value I will have found that is larger than 14 will be 25. There's no way around that. And then where would any potential winners or better values be? Well, they can't be to the right because everything over there is bigger than 25. So I have to go to the left. And to the left over here, 8 is not greater than 14. So I need to go to the right. 9 is not greater than 14. So I need to go to the right. 19 is greater than 14, so 25 is no longer my best. 19 is. And then, again, I don't need to go to the right because 19 is already my new best, and I need to find values smaller than that. So I'm going to go to the left. Or to the left, 13 is not greater than 14. But 15 is. So 15 is my smallest value greater than or equal to 14. Let's look at the code just to see how this works. If the value we're looking at is greater than or equal to the one provided as input, then we guaranteed have found a new better value. So looking at our tree, was that true? Every time we found a value that was greater than or equal to 14, it was guaranteed to update it because we're always only looking for more viable values in the directions we are searching. So if we find a better value, we go left and hope to find an even smaller value. And if not, we go to the right. Like many algorithms we have seen in the past, this is going to be in theta of h. It is in theta of h because we are always going only one of two directions, left or right, every single time. We could very, very similarly implement a method that was the tree max less than or equal to, and that would work out effectively identically. I'm going to let you guys try to figure out how you would code that to do all of the switching around to make it work correctly. But that could be done very, very similarly to what we have done here. A somewhat related problem might be how do we count the number of nodes greater than a certain value or less than a certain value? Let's begin by discussing the more abstract problem, which is what if we wanted to count the number of values within a range? So we did this before with reporting them, but let's say we want to know how many values are between 8 and 26. To do this, well, I'm going to need to count them. And there's not many ways around it. I'm going to need to count that I found one value here. Then I have to go to the right, go to the left, go to the left, find this, go to the right, go to the left. Then over here, we're going to go to the left, go to the right. This was correct. This was correct. Go to the right, go to the right, go to the left, go to the left. And all of those values are within the range. And we can add up one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one every single time and discover that there are... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight values within that range. Totally valid way to implement it. Unfortunately, that turns out to be pretty slow because this code, doing exactly what I just claimed, is effectively the same as our report in range function. And that took theta of i plus h, where i was the number of nodes within the range. So that's really not ideal. So let's see if we can come up with a smarter way to do this. A common approach in data structure design whenever you want to improve a runtime is to add new variables to your data structure that can help you solve that problem that you're stuck on. So currently our nodes look like a key and a left value and a right value and a parent. In addition to that, we're going to add a size field which corresponds to the size of the binary search tree rooted at that value. So this is going to help us solve this problem and we'll see how that works in several methods to follow.